Now we're going to consider two more examples for uh, irreversible uh, processes. The first one is forming a thermal contact. So let's say that we have uh, two systems A and A prime and these systems are both isolated. So uh, let me note that here they are both isolated and the total system A plus A prime is called A star and A star is also isolated. So they are individually isolated and the total system A star is also thermally isolated. So what does that mean? There is no energy exchange between A and A prime and there is no energy exchange between A, A prime and the environment. So the constraint uh, that is provided by this thermal isolation is that the energies must be constant. So for uh, the constraints on these two systems I, ha I can say that um, E must be a constant, E prime, the energy of the prime system must be a constant, and E plus E prime, which is E star, the total energy of the uh, star system, total system, uh, are constants. So all these three are constants in this uh, first initial uh, scenario. So initially I have uh, total energy E sub I for system unprimed system A and E sub I prime for the prime system A prime. So I have E I plus E I prime is equal to E I star. Now I make a thermal contact between A and A prime. So still A plus A prime, which is A star, is thermally isolated. However, there is a thermal contact between A and A prime. So A and A prime are in thermal contact so, so that they can exchange uh, energy in the form of heat. So this means that there, there is a new constraint uh, E and E prime are not constants individually but what will happen is because I formed a thermal contact but did not change the isolation from the surroundings um, EI plus EI prime which is EI star must be equal to E final plus E final prime which is E final star. So you, you must have the same energy in the star system because the total system is isolated. E star is a constant. Now uh, we all know what will happen when you form a thermal contact between two systems. If the temperature of system A is not equal to temperature of system A prime initially, what will happen? Uh, heat flows um, between the systems until we have uh, the temperature, uh, initial temperatures are not the same, final temperatures will be the same and there will be uh, all final accessible states all final accessible states will be occupied with equal probability uh, at equilibrium so this is our postulate of equal a priori probabilities and finally, we will have for the star system, the number of accessible states to the star system 
will be greater than the initial number of accessible states in the star system. Uh, and initially we have the average energy per molecule in the unprimed system not equal to the initial energy per molecule in the prime system. However, uh, in the final configuration, final average energy per molecule, uh, average kinetic energy per molecule, will be the same for both systems. But since there is an increase in the number of accessible states in, uh, in the star system, the process will be irreversible. Okay, so this is going to tell us it's an irreversible process. Now, uh, let's consider a, a similar example. That's the movable piston. Let's say that this system A and A prime uh, are initially occupying volumes uh, V sub I and V sub I prime, and there is a fixed piston between them. Uh, in this case, we have the following constraint. Um, constraints will be V sub I and V sub I prime are constants. So this is going to be the constraint. Now, if I make this piston a movable piston, uh, then I'm going to have uh, a final configuration here, V final and V final prime, uh, because I have for the star system, A star, uh, I did not change the total volume, V i plus V i prime, which is V star, is a constant, I must have in this final configuration Vi plus Vi prime is V final plus V final prime, which is equal to the total volume of the start system. And when does the system reach equilibrium? At equilibrium, we're going to have the same average pressure on both sides. So average pressure on the prime side and unprimed side will be the same. So here I have average pressure not equal to uh, the prime and unprimed values are not equal to each other. And what will happen here is that again, uh, as the system evolves to reach this equilibrium condition, P final bar is equal to P final primed bar, I will end up with an increased number of accessible states for the start system and this is going to imply that it is an irreversible uh, process um, in this scenario as well. Okay, so it's very important that we identify the constraints that we impose on the system and what they imply for the number of accessible states. In the case of forming a thermal contact between A and A prime, two individually isolated systems, the total energy must be a constant because the total system A plus A prime is isolated. However, when I make this thermal contact between the two, I allow energy exchange between the two systems with the constraint that the total energy must be constant. If the initial temperatures of the two systems are not the same, when you form a thermal contact, heat will flow until the temperatures, final temperatures will be the same, which will imply that average kinetic energy per molecule on two sides of the thermal contact will be the same. And this is going to correspond to an increase in the number of accessible states because you will have a more uniform distribution of energy and therefore the process will be irreversible. If you have a fixed piston between two systems A and A prime which are uh, isolated uh, from the surroundings, then you have the constraint that the volume of system A and volume of system A prime, V initial and V initial prime, must be constant. And moreover, the total system A plus A prime, A star, has a constant volume. Now, if I change this fixed piston with a movable piston, provided that the initial average pressures on two sides of this piston are not the same, the piston will move until we have the same 
average pressure on both sides at equilibrium and this is going to correspond to an increase in the number of accessible states and at equilibrium we will have the same probability of occupancy of each accessible final accessible state and because we're still increasing the number of accessible uh, states this is going to be an irreversible process.